Hey, what's up everybody? I've been doing lots of uh, online training for Unreal Engine lately, and one of the things I've learned, um, some new things about, is uh, uh, master sequences. And uh, I never really realized how powerful they were before. And so in this video, I'm going to show you some things uh, that I've learned about that and how they may be useful to you. And you may not even use a tool like DaVinci Resolve anymore. You may just do all of your color grading and your uh, sequencing in Unreal Engine. So anyway, let's check it out. All right, so I've got a very basic level here with just a couple of lights and a model from Kitbash 3D. Uh, so let's go to cinematics and let's uh, add a master sequence. And there's lots of options here. The thing we're going to focus on right now is the number of shots. I'm just going to use three for right now. And um, there's several other things that you can adjust here. I probably will go into several of these in another video, but for right now I'm just kind of showing um, the basic uh, time-saving features of a master sequence. So let's just go ahead and create the master sequence. And you'll see what this gives you is uh, it, pre it creates a uh, sequence master with three separate sequences uh, already created for you. So here's how this saves you quite a bit of time. In the content browser, you'll notice that it has created the sequences folder. Uh, and inside of that, um, it has created each one of these uh, shots for you. Um, and auto numbered them and these correlate to those three sequences that we're seeing in the master sequence. So it builds all of this stuff up for you, gives it a nice naming convention. You can change a lot of that in those settings that we saw before. So one thing I like to always do here is change this to 24 FPS. It uh, generally um, helps um, make it look a little more cinematic to me. I don't, I don't know, just kind of a habit, I guess. So one thing you'll notice uh, in these level sequences uh, it has created a spawned camera here. Um, so let's on the spawned camera, let's um, make sure we're at the beginning here. And let's go to the transform and um, let's go ahead and set a basic keyframe uh, at the beginning and then let's go all the way to the end and let's move this. I'm really just kind of trying to set up some very simple camera movement here just so that you can see the uh, individual scene transitions. This is uh, not really great uh, camera positioning here. so. Just a little disclaimer there. So let's see, let's do that. Let's um, adjust the rotation that just a little bit here. All right, so that's good enough for now. That's all that we really need to do for this example. So uh, let's see, let's uh, switch back over to the sequence master. And you can see that uh, this first clip now has changed to the, the first sequence. So now let's work on the second one. All right, and so this one is set up the exact same way. So let's go to the beginning. Let's uh, set our initial uh, keyframe for the transform and let's move the camera into a different spot so that we can make this like a second, uh, second pass through here. So let's see, let's move it around. All right, well, that's good enough for this example. So let's see, let's switch back to the sequence master and um, let's just take a look at this uh, from the beginning and see what we've got so far. So we start with this first sequence, it plays through, it starts the second sequence, it plays through, and so now we're ready to finish it out with this third sequence. All right, so once again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go back to the very beginning. Uh, we are going to set a transform on the spawned camera and let's move the camera to a different starting position. All right, well, that's good enough for this example. So let's go back to the sequence master and let's take a look. Um, let's click this button so that we're seeing, yeah, okay, we're seeing the sequence here. And let's play through first sequence. Camera spins around, hard cut to the second. Goes across the top, hard cut. Let's just go from the front all the way to the back. And so those are our three different clips here. So now here's some neat things that you can do with the sequence master that may save you some time of having to uh, export each one of these as individual video clips or, or image sequences and pulling them into another program like DaVinci Resolve. You can do some very basic uh, track cutting and rearranging and fade tracks right here in the uh, sequence master. So let me show you how to do that. All right, so let's start with something very basic, but, but very useful. So uh, let's split this clip in half. So let's select this third sequence, split section. And so now we've got two different uh, clips, but they're both uh, from the same sequence that we just created a minute ago. It's basically took that and it uh, has split it in half so that we can use it in two different places here. 
So now we can just grab this clip and we can drag it down and it will create a new track uh, that we can put new shots on. And so let's see, let's just move this around to here. Let's rearrange a couple of things here. All right, well, this works good enough for this example. So here I've kind of shortened some of these things and rearranged, you know, like, I don't know, maybe this is some type of an intro sequence or something. Um, but you see, you know, the power that you have here in the um, the master sequence. So I didn't even quite realize that you could do this before. So um, anyway, so let's add a fade track. This is something else that's pretty neat as well. So a fade track is a built-in type of thing where you can basically uh, set, you know, a fade from one to zero. Um, you know, based upon these keyframes. So let's add a little fade in at the beginning and we'll add a little fade out at the end. And, uh, you know, you can play around with this and adjust it so that it works the way that you want it to do. I imagine that you could, you know, use this also as a fade uh, between uh, tracks uh, if you want. Um, I'm really just kind of getting started with some of this, but you can see that, you know, this can really save you quite a bit of time. Um, if you like this type of stuff, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. I've got a lot of Unreal Engine content and I try to make uh, videos every weekend. Um, so thanks for watching.